focusing on the individual child and the well-being of that child without looking at the issues of poverty, oppression, intergenerational trauma, unemployment that their families are in and their communities are in is not helping to resolve the problems at all. It's not challenging the systems that created conditions that our children are living in. Join us for our second critical conversation in the Reconstructing Children's Rights Institute, confronting colonialism, racism, and patriarchy in child welfare and child rights programming, organized by the Care and Protection of Children, or CPC Learning Network. In this conversation, we will learn from Drs. Jason Hart and Catherine Love. We are asking deep questions. One is the whole the question of you know, whose universality? How do we avoid uh, imposing uh, an understanding of child protection that comes from a very specific cultural, political, uh, economic context and is applied unreflexively to various other very different contexts? The other thing that is important, I think, before we can really confront racism, colonialism and patriarchy is to combat whitewashing. And by that, I mean the assumption that things that come from a particular cultural, social, economic, global north context, those elements of cultures and societies and communities that don't fit with that are somehow negative. We are acknowledging complex structural problems. The nations where the international organisations are delivering child protection, humanitarian aid, have almost inevitably been the subject of colonisation and colonialism in the past. But also they are aware that very often the humanitarian regime bring ongoing colonialism in their work. And that includes power, oppression, economic deprivation in our work. How has the experience of colonialism, of you know, ethnic cleansing, of you know, destruction, erasure in, in so many different ways. How does that impact a society? We are tackling thorny political issues. Palestinian children are being told effectively, you cannot claim, you cannot achieve protection until there is a two-state solution. The first thing I think we need to do is to acknowledge the long-term ongoing impacts of colonialism agencies doing this kind of work are not political enough that they're not willing to acknowledge the politics that they're engaged with. We are constructively critiquing the way child protection is practiced today. So what happens when aid workers, child protection workers come in, particularly from overseas, impose their child protection systems, their concepts of social work and psychology, is that it comes into conflict very often with the established collectivist systems that already exist, but may be invisible to, let's say, Western eyes and in these communities. And that's a problem. And we are exploring paths forward. We have to be brave. We really have to speak up where we see this stuff going on. We also have to attend to the relationship between UN stroke international NGOs and local organizations on the ground. We have to be willing to challenge the power of relations, to look at that, to say who actually on the ground gets to determine what child protection is, what it looks like, what the measures are. Because the system is work is operated in such a way that there is a very clear hierarchy. We need to listen and be really open to people from the communities. And I'm talking again, the cult of the aunties. What would they want to see happen? What can international workers do to support them and get the resources as much as possible to them to set up their own system? Visit the Reconstructing Children's Rights Institute website to join in the entire series seeking to dismantle unjust systems.